Now today's purple day. It is indeed, and you're yes, wearing purple. Yes, I am. I am for a, for a very special reason. It is. It is Global Purple Day uh, to raise awareness about the condition known as epilepsy. And yes. Epilepsy is surprisingly common. One in a hundred people in the UK will suffer from it. And globally, it's more than that. One in twenty-four. Mm. Um, and it's so common that it, it's more common than multiple sclerosis, AIDS, Parkinson's, cerebral palsy, muscular dystrophy put together. Of course. Um, and yet there's this stigma attached to it you know people mm. who suffer from epilepsy still have to persuade other people that they're normal you mm. know and whilst in most cases it's eminently controllable and treatable um, manageable for some people it's difficult to keep their mm. seizures at bay and and obviously that affects the quality of life driving um, certain jobs so Martin Kemp has spoken um, openly about no he has his, he's um, been very eloquent epilepsy. talking about it and again it helps it's like it really Kelly does. talking mm. earlier on like Angelina Jolie when people do speak it just gives you an opportunity it raises awareness yes which is a good yes. thing now we actually spoke to Sam Downey uh, Sam is someone who's been living with epilepsy since birth. Hello, I'm Sam Downey. I'm a broadcaster, actor, performer and journalist and I've had epilepsy for most of my life. My epilepsy is caused by brain lesions, which are brain tumours. I am currently going through various tests which include MRI scans, video EEGs and neurological exams as well to find out what the main cause of my epilepsy is. My epilepsy does affect my working life but I try to be happy. Today is Purple Day and we really need to raise awareness all about epilepsy and brain seizures. So the bear speaking again very eloquently and just raising awareness, yes. which is what this day is all about. Yeah, I, he speaks very eloquently about it and the more people who open up and sure. talk about Absolutely. it, the better. Absolutely. My name is Robert Poloha and I've had epilepsy since birth, since the first 48 hours of my life. Now I am 50 years of age. Tell me about the VNS that you have. I currently am on my third vagal nerve stimulator. The first one which I received in the year 2000. That one lasted 10 years. Then I went on to my second one which lasted five and a half years and now I have been given the Aspire VNS. Tell me about your the epilepsy medication that you're on. I'm currently on the Kepra, 2,250 a day, and I'm on the Esli Carbazepine, 800 milligrams a day. Tell me what it's like uh, living with epilepsy. Personally, I haven't known what it is like living without it because I was born with it. And it is, it has been a great challenge having had to be transferred from many different medications. I have been given throughout my whole life, over 50 years, I've been given probably about 15, 16 different medications. Tell me what advice you would give to people with epilepsy. The advice that I would give to people with epilepsy is don't give up. There's always something new coming out. The more you, the more medication that you go on, maybe the more difficult it becomes, the more stubborn your body gets. But it is always a challenge and I'm just very grateful that there are other medications on the horizon which can be used and things are improving in a way that they have never improved before. And finally, tell me why epilepsy awareness is important to you. It is important to me because it's just wonderful to be able to relate to other people who have the same condition. It wasn't till probably in the last two years that I started meeting more people with epilepsy, hearing their stories and discovering 
yeah, I'm not the only one. There are loads out there. There are loads of people out there with epilepsy who may not even say anything about it. But once you meet other people, you realize you're not by yourself. And the more that you can work together with other people to get to know them, the more encouraged you can be and the more benefit you get from it. Hello, so we're here at the Epilepsy Awareness Day 2014 at Disneyland. Tell me about the book and your story. it would be my pleasure. Same what happened was, after developing epilepsy, I realized that people didn't want to talk about it. But I said that doesn't make any sense because epilepsy is all around us. So I, I created a character named Mr. Kevin Bolden to represent epilepsy. We had uh, Michael J. Fox for Parkinson's disease. We had Irvin Magic Johnson for uh, HIV. So I said with a person that people can relate to, Kevin Bolden, I can get the story across. So I created a, a man named Kevin Bolden who's a family corporate man. He moves into a neighborhood called The Village. And in The Village, uh, the children get to know Mr. Mr. Bolden quickly. He's playing with them and become their friend. And they see him as being an average everyday man. And then one day, Mr. Bolden has a seizure in the backyard while playing with them and the children take off running. And the Bolton children said, no, 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 he's okay. And when the children come back, that's the time when the Bolton family educate the children about epilepsy. And that education about epilepsy is the key. And so with that in mind, the kids are not educated, but they don't tell their parents because parents know it all. That's mm -hmm. what I thought too, myself, when I first heard about it. So later on, as Mr. Bolton goes along, he comes home one evening, and it's about 5.30 in the evening, as he gets home, he gets out the car, he has another seizure. But at this time, the people in the village are driving by, and they see him with his suit on, his briefcase, about 5.30, following the yard with his suitcase, and then they see the family, the kids and his wife come out and drag him back in the house. So now they have an image of Mr. Bolden, even though they don't, they never met him. And with that in mind, the adults, just like society these days, they, they, they make a, uh, an assumption for they get to know people. They don't, Mr. Bowden loses his job. The kids can understand it because he's a successful career man. He has great morals and ethics. He's a hardworking man. He just forgot to take his medication one day and overworked. He had a seizure. But because of that, the company would not let him come back in. And the children in the village were very upset. And when the adults came home and saw the children upset, they, they questioned them. The father was smoking a cigarette and drinking beer. He says, um, what's your problem? And the kids say, well, uh, our friend, Mr. Bowden, he lost his job. And the mom said, Mr. Bowden, you mean the new man that moved in down the street? The kids, the kids said, yes, sir. This man, Mr. Bowden. And the father said, well, he should have lost his job. And the kids said, what are you talking about? And then the father said, well, we came home about a week ago. We saw Mr. Fancy Pants <laughs> get out of his car on the evening. About 530, he fell right in the yard, and the kids and his wife had to drag him in the house. And the children asked, did you stop and help him? The parents said, no, we knew what he was doing. The kids said, you didn't stop? The parents said, no. And then the children said, why? They said, well, we knew what he was doing, and we don't want you hanging around Mr. Bolton anymore either. The kids said, have you met Mr. Bolton yet? And the parents said, no, and we don't want to meet him, and you're all going to stop hanging around him. The kids said to the parents, mom, dad, Mr. Bolton, he doesn't smoke and drink like y'all do. He has epilepsy. <laughs> and the father takes a cigarette and puts it out, takes a beer and puts it behind the couch like he hadn't been drinking. And he says, um, what are you talking about? And the kids explain to them that he's a hardworking man. He just overworked himself. And so the mother tries to leave the room. And the kids said, Mom, Dad, have you ever been telling everybody Mr. Bowden's an alcoholic? Because he can't find a job to support his family. And the father said, son, I'm sorry we didn't know. And the mother said, yes, honey, how did we know? And the kid says, to the parents, well, didn't you tell us not to judge anybody? And so that's how it takes off from there. And uh, uh, I've had a couple of um, filmmakers look at it it's for a movie to help educate people about epilepsy. And this one family right here, they went all the way down from Virginia Beach after they, uh, their son would not go back to school. I met him. I gave him a copy of the book. 
and in doing so, they went down to CNN News to try to nominate me for a CNN hero. But they were they got there a little bit too late, and they couldn't get into the doors. Oh. But things have been going great. So we're pushing hard for this to become a, a movie to help educate people. We want to go to the schools, help the kids change from being bullies to heroes, because you can't be a hero and a bully at the same time. No, you can't, Scott. Yeah, so we're, we're really doing a lot of education with, with, with epilepsy. Yes, sir. When you were diagnosed, how did people around you um, take you as a person with epilepsy? Well, it was back in 1980, I was 20 years old, and they questioned me about how I was going to finish college. And I said, well, I'm going to go to class and turn in my homework. And they said, we know that, but you can't continue to go to school, you have epilepsy, and work and play basketball. I said, why not? And so that's what I did. I continued to do all that, and I even increased my credit hours from 12 to 18 per semester, I continued to play basketball for the school. And then on top of that, I got a second part-time job to try to prove to everybody that I was normal. But actually, I realized that they were the normal ones. I was doing too much. <laughs> so I, I realized that I, I could just have to be myself yeah. and, and educate them about epilepsy. That was the key, education. Yes. So awareness is a key to epilepsy. What would five awareness keys to tell people about epilepsy would be? In my opinion, with that, when you see somebody different, first of all, you have to always understand that epilepsy can happen to anyone. That's one thing. Then when they may have a seizure, you have to approach them and question them, you know, are you okay? And then if the person does not respond, the next thing you realize that something's not clear, but the person is still awake on their feet and everything else. So it's like a... Um, you understand that the person is there, but they're not all the way there. Yeah. It's, it's that um, unconscious state at the end, because you, you're unconscious when you have epilepsy. And the, the next one is that if you don't see somebody falling out, that doesn't mean that they don't, they're not having a seizure. Because everybody, when you think about epilepsy, they think about a grand mal, which is called tonic-clonic now, and they have to fall out and be on, their, be on the ground. That's not the case. It's the fact that the individual might not be clearly thinking. And those are the things you need to look at. Clearly thinking, their eyes, uh, how they're moving, and how they respond to you. Those things like that make all the difference in the world. Yes. So finally, let's focus again on your book. Let's tell people where they can buy your book from. Well, my book, The Village, again, is uh, available online at Barnes & Noble Bookstore. My publisher, uh, Lyrical Forecast Publishing, you also purchase it from there. And also, you can publish from my, from my um, blog at, at thevillageiscoming.blogspot.com. Things have been going great, and I know this is what I'm supposed to do, so it's going excellent. I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. And I've got a beautiful wife that's helping me out, and that support is, makes all the difference in the world. And that support and education is the key to, to all of it. Noel, thank you for talking to me. My pleasure, Sam. And have a great day. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.